Are you tired of sending out notes and invites after every meeting every week? It's really a waste of time. Are you looking for a better solution? Now let me show you how I do it with Power Apps and Power Automate for Power Platform University, right? I have to do this every week. And so I automated the process so I could teach you how to do it and to make my life easier. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through a Power App that takes some different inputs, you know, all the things I need to do, when's the next meeting, what were the notes from the last one, right? Quick little updates, we save those updates to make it faster next week. And then we've shipped that over to Flow. Flow is dynamically gonna get the list of people that need to get the invites. And then it's going to iterate through that. It's going to send one invite per person so everyone gets that personal touch and they're not connected to the other students. Sound interesting? Well, let's take a look. All right, so here's the app, right? You can see it's just a bunch of simple inputs. So the subject, the date of the next meeting, right? I'm going to send a meeting invite, so I need to know the date. The start time, the meetings are always an hour, so I don't need an end time or duration. And then the mentors, I made this configurable because it hard codes or defaults to Jeff and Steven. But just in case we add one later, or we have somebody temporarily, I can kind of do this on the fly. And then over here on the right, we've got the message body. And so this is everything that I want to say, right? You know, my niceties, what is the new recordings they got access to? What is the coming up lesson? This is the one the meeting invites going for. Then some updates down here at the bottom, right? So that's all here. And we're going to then just hit send. When we hit send, we're not actually going to hit send because I don't want to send all the students one. But when we hit send over here, you're going to see that it triggers a flow. For the flow, what we need to do is we need to go first and fetch all the students. So we're using a REST API, right? So think if it is the platform that our training site runs on top of. And so they have an API and that is my API key. So I hope I remember to board it out. But this is hitting up their API and getting you know up to the first 100 people by the current course ID and then all the people who are not expired, right? So everyone, you're only in there for six months, everybody who's within their six month window. And so then this should return it. Now, how did I know to do this? Well, I'd never done it before. So I went over to Thinkific and I searched in their API and I found that they have a whole bunch of different, you know, endpoints, right? So things for uh, courses, bundles, you know, different groups, uh, orders, and even users. And so I kind of had to poke around until I found the right one. But what I figured out for me was that enrollments here had the people that I wanted. And then they have a nice little builder here where I could kind of mess around. So this is where I was able to change that limit to 100. Um, and then I was able to do my specific course ID. So I did a separate query previously to get the course ID of university. So I plop that in here. And then that was it. And you can see down here the example payload that comes back. I don't want to show you my students' payload. But in here, really the only thing I needed was their user email. So if I get this sample payload from this call, right, then what are we going to do? The first thing you have to do is we got to parse the JSON. And so parsing JSON, you just take the body, the output of this action, and you do generate from sample, and it will spit out um, the, the schema for you, right? So this is what's going to create the dynamic content, because we know that we want a dynamic content for user email. So this is being defined by the schema. The good news is, is like, I don't understand how all that works really. I just said generate from sample, showed it that sample, and it spit it in here. Now, I will point out that if you have uh, fields in here, it's a little pro tip. So if you have a field here like expiry date, and so it typically comes in as a string, but if it's null, if someone doesn't expire, like an internal person at Power Apps 91, they don't have an exp expiration date, so it would come through as null. So even though it originally looked like username here with just a curly brackets type string curly bracket, which we know is a record, right? A single value. So say username has to be a string. What we did for expiry, expiry date, expiry date, I don't know what that says. So we said type colon, we manually did this. We added the square brackets and then we said square brackets and then string just the way it was, comma, and then null. And so this avoids the error. If you're ever getting error messages like, you know, expected value and got null from when you're doing parse JSON. So you come in here and you edit that. And then once you edit that, then if you scroll down to the bottom, you're typically going to see required. And so uh, expiry date was down here. And so I just deleted this as one of the required fields. And so that way, for those people that it's null, they don't cause my flow to crash. A little pro tip for you there. Okay. So once I got them all in, then I wanted to get rid of all the Power Apps 911 people, right? I don't want to invite all the 20 people that work here, even though they all have access to university. So what we did was we did a filter array. The items here is the dynamic content from parse JSON. 
And then we said user email, remember that user email field we saw earlier, does not contain at powerapps911.com. And so this filters everybody out that has a powerapps911.com email address. Bye people. Now that we're down to just the external users, we're then going to run through an array here, right? So apply to each. And this is the body from the filter array. And we're doing a create event. And what we're asking here, this are all the inputs that came from our Power App, right? So what is the subject? That was a field in the Power App. Start time, that was a field in the Power App. End time, field in the Power App. Well, actually it wasn't a field in the Power App. And so what create time you'll see over there when we look at Power App is I just took the start time and I added an hour to it. And so we send that over. I did UTC because Power Apps is sending over uh, things as UTC. And so we're just gonna send this out as UTC. But this doesn't break anything, right? Because I set it in the Eastern time zone. Our meetings are in the Eastern time zone. So that Eastern time zone number, like if I chose three, gets converted to UTC, which is, uh, so what, instead of 1500, it'd be 20, at 20 o'clock, is that a thing? And then, so when the meeting gets sent out, it gets sent out for 20 o'clock. But if you open this in the Eastern time zone, it's like, oh, you're in the Eastern time zone. Let me subtract five hours out of that, which is then three o'clock, right? 15 o'clock. So, all of that happens, right? So one of the keys to when you dynamically create these events is you're wanting to use a UTC time zone for the whole process, and then everyone will see the meeting invites in their right time. Required attendees here. So this is then the dynamic content from the filtered body, which we know from parse JSON is the user email. So this is the user email of the actual students. And once again, I'm sending a create invite, right? So if we've got 50 students, we're sending 50 separate invites. The reason for that is because I don't want each student to be seeing everyone else. I don't want them to be able to easily spam each other. So instead of sending one invite with 50 people, we're going to send 50 invites with one people, one people, one person. But I'm doing that on purpose for, you know, data, you know, just to keep people kind of from messing. So then down here, we have two things. We have the create teams message. So this is something we're passing over from Power Apps. That's the rich text editor data. And then once that's done, we are then putting down here at the bottom all of the div stuff that makes up a meeting. And so if we were to look over here at Chewy, right? So Chewy has gotten the meeting. You can see, look, there's all the hope you had a great weekend. There's a new content coming up, update Shane, the sign off. And then the Teams meeting stuff is linked at the bottom. And so, but we're not actually creating a Teams meeting here, right? We've already created one Teams meeting we use for these. So I just took its HTML and put it down here. And if you do this correctly, which is, you know, basically copy and paste without messing up, notice that right, this is something I had to really fight with, but it automatically has the joins teams meeting, right? This was something I wanted. I wanted them to be able to click on the join teams meeting when they got the calendar invites. So, um, you know, by getting the format just right down there, we were able to do it. And if you just copy and paste one that works, it should be right. But if you start messing with it, the odds of you messing this up is very high. I probably spent a couple hours on this yesterday. Shh. Right, but there's the big joints, okay? So that produces what we want in the body. And then if we scroll down here, and then I, you know, I just manually typed in online via Teams. I set the importance to normal. Um, I set the reminder to 15. Reminder is on yes, show as busy. And then response required no, because I don't need to get all the responses back from people whether or not they're attending, right? This is like a courtesy thing. I'm not, you know, I don't need to know if they're coming or not. Hope they're coming. And then at the end, we just send an email to me and the mentors and say, hey, this all went out. And I'm probably going to change this to put the same body down here, right? So let's just fix that while we're here. So I just go down here and then, oh, you know what? Flow is being a jerk. So we'll go up here. So I just want this. I would click once, control C, down here and in the body. We'll get rid of good job, Shane, and we'll paste it in. And so then now the mentors would get the same body information that the students get every week. There you go. That is the flow side of this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Now, one thing to note here as well is that I did decide to write this as Chewy instead of me, right? So I, I warned all the students that you get an email or the invites would come from Chewy. The reason for that is if we go back over here and look at Chewy's email, right? What, what would we see if we were to look at the 23rd? Chewy has got 50 of these things, right? Oh, because remember we sent one per student. So there's 50 separate meeting invites. So that means Chewy has 50 separate meetings on his thing for right now or for 3 p.m., right? So 
just keep that in mind when you're building and doing this um, that you know you might not want to send 50 emails from you. Maybe you do, but it makes your calendar really busy. Thankfully, the dog's calendar, not so important. Okay? So then on the Power App side, this Power App is about as simple as they get. I threw in, right, this is the text input. You see it over here on the right, left. That's a date picker. Start time. So this is the date picker with the numbers of, you know, 1 to 12, right? So for the different hours of the day. And then I really just want meetings to be at the zeros or the 30s, so I didn't really have to do much there. And then for AM, PM here, remember you can always use clock.ampm and they'll put it there in your language for you. Kind of a nice feature. The mentors, this is a combo box hooked up to the Office 365 search users. So that is a data source over here in the app. Is search term required as false? Values that. And then I'm filtering it to only show the Power Apps 911 addresses because in this case, you know, I don't want all of our external users. So it's literally just our internal um, email addresses I can choose from. And then this is a new trick I invented yesterday. So one of the hard things about combo boxes is setting that default value, right? We, we know default selected items is a pain to set. And in this case, I would I wanted to hard code it to Jeff and Steven, but I didn't want to like add all their columns and go through all the hoops. So here I said show columns, just show me the mail and display name, because there's only two columns I need from this, right? So for default selected items, what do we know? the default selected items needs to return a table that matches the same format. In this case, it's just two columns, mail and display name. Like, look, if we just click here real quick and show you, just highlight this whole thing. Table, right? And so it's a table with display name and mail. All right, remember, I'm going to blur out those mails. That's it. But so then if that's good, yay, it's good. So then here, we just need to recreate that same table, but just saying Jeff and Steven. So I used a table function and then hard coded a record for display name, Jeff Taylor, and then mail, Jeff at Power Apps 911, close that record, comma, and did the same thing for Steven. If we click here and hit the drop down for table, it matches that same format, just those two columns. Two columns, two columns, same, boom, it finds matches. And now it'll always default to those two because there are standard mentors for this. Neat little trick, right? Okay. So then last but not least, this is just a rich text editor. But what I did here was every week, right? I, I edit the email, I change the recordings, I change, right? I, I gotta change like half the body. Other half I don't. So every week when I get done, when I hit the send, it starts to flow and then it saves whatever's in here into this university email settings, right? So we just have a SharePoint list over here. Let's go edit data. It just has one row and then that row is just a multi text, plain text line, right? Like this, it's pretty worthless from here. It is the raw HTML. But every time I open the app, it sucks this back in. So next week when I open it, I'll have in front of me what I wrote last week. And all we're doing there is we're saying that the default here is first university email settings, the list dot message, because there's only one record in there that'll return that first record. And then down here when we do the send, if we ignore the flow portion for a second, oh, didn't mean to do that, we're just patching that data back in. Little things that make my life easier. Then you can see the last little piece of logic we need to talk about here is sending this, right? So runner flow um, for the subject, right? That is just subject.txt. Rich text editor is the message. And then for the dates um, right here, you can see. So when over on the input side of the flow, for the, the date, it wants it in that form, that UTC format, right? Like if you go over here and put your mouse in start time and hover, start time, right? You see that example 217-08-29T04, blah, 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 blah. It wants that format. So I got to send it that format. So to send it that format, what I did was I used the take text function and set it to date time zone UTC. And then because we're using these pieces, remember the three drop downs. We have to use the date time value function to turn those three pieces into uh, what we want, right? And the date. So we combine all that, but the date time value function, like if we can get this thing to unselect. So if I go here, look, that returns 2.23, 3 p.m. So if you're troubleshooting this, make sure that returns that because then now when we highlight the text function there, it returns 2.23-02 blah, blah, t. And exactly what it expected, right? And there's that 20. Remember we talked about 
sending it UTC, keeping everything UTC. So it's sending it as 18 o'clock instead of 15 o'clock, which is what um, 3 p.m. is. For the, um, the next one here, so this is the end time. All we're doing is we're just taking the hour and we're doing plus one. So the hour was three, three plus one is four, right? And so we're just writing the formula. We're just throwing in the four, boom. We're sending over now the right time for that. And then last but not least, we wanted to send over Jeff at powerapps91.com as Steven. So here we're using a concat function to do that. You can see uh, that, that concat function takes these selected items, puts a semicolon between them and gives us Jeff at Power Apps 91. So there you go, friends. There's a real world app that I use to make my life better. And honestly, if you've got people in your organization that are doing the same type of thing, it's a way for you to make their lives better also. And if you look at it, you know, it's, it's not terribly complex, which is pretty typical, right? It's a quick Power App to grab some data in and then we're shipping it over to Flow. And you know, the Flow took hours, not a long time, right? Because I kept iterating on it and not only iterating on the challenges inside of the Flow, but iterating on like the process, right? Because at first I was like, all right, I'm gonna generate a new Teams meeting every time and then grab that body and put that in the emails and send all those out. But then I'm like, well, if I do that, then I go update the website where these people access the Teams meeting. So instead, let's just use the same Teams meeting all over. Like there was just a bunch of that kind of back and forth. And it's a good reminder, like when you're learning, if you've got the business process solved, you know exactly what you wanna do, then you're only solving the tech challenge, right? I was trying to solve the tech challenge and the business challenge at the same time, which just takes longer. But I feel really good about the result I got at the end. So with all that said, thoughts, comments, leave them below. I read all of them and try to respond to as many as I can. You know, ideas, things you'd like to see differently here, questions, you know, I'm always up for that. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.